All right, two weeks have passed, and I'm excited about testing how well the tennis balls have been repressurized. The canister on the left was set to 30 PSI for two weeks, and the canister on the right was set to 32 PSI for two weeks. You're going to take the MFL adapter that I showed you how to create in the previous video, and you're going to attach it to the air valve on the canister. What you're going to want to do then is take your air compressor you used to fill the canister with um, and just open the valve up when you connect it to it. That way the air will just come right out of the canister and it'll depressurize um, the canister. So what I'm hoping to do is test how well the balls bounce compared to brand new tennis balls and see which setting is best to use. I want to know if 30 PSI for two weeks is the right setting for dead tennis balls or 32 PSI for two weeks is the right setting. Now I don't know if either one is going to be the best, but I will find out in this video. So it takes about a few minutes uh, to let all the air out, but just be patient. It'll come out relatively quick. And when you no longer hear air coming out, you can remove it. My next step is now to take three balls out of the container on the left, which was set at 30 PSI for two weeks. And what I want to do is measure um, the ball height for the first bounce and second bounce, and then compare um, the ball height bounce of the repressurized balls to a new can of tennis balls, which by the way is the same brand that I bought um, for the balls that I repressurized. So that way I have somewhat of a control and I can compare the results uh, for the new tennis balls with the old tennis balls. So with that being said, let's see what the results are. All right, so the first repressurized ball bounced 30 inches on the first bounce and about nine inches on the second bounce. Um, the second ball had a very comparable result with 30 inches on the first bounce and about 10 inches on the second bounce. Now the other ball bounced a little higher on the first bounce with 33 inches and on the um, second bounce you can see it went to about 15 inches. So those are pretty good results. Now my next step is to verify uh, and compare what a new can of tennis balls will be like compared to the repressurized tennis balls that were set at 30 psi um, for two weeks. Now the new tennis balls had a similar height on the first bounce but a little higher at 33 and the second bounce was higher at 18 inches. Um, I'm going to verify that with another bounce. Um, the first bounce on the second new ball was 33 inches and again the second bounce was around 18 inches. And I got the same result uh, even though the ball kind of bounced to the left. I got 33 inches on the first one and about 18 inches on the second one. So the new tennis balls were slightly higher on the second bounce. So what I'm going to do now is see how well the um, balls bounce together just to give you side-by-side -side comparison. And you can kind of tell uh, in the video that the repressurized balls are slightly lower in bounce than a brand new can of tennis balls. And as they kind of bounce further on, you can tell the new tennis ball has a little bit more liveliness to it. So I'm dropping each ball uh, to give you kind of a side-by-side -side comparison. Now this kind of shows me that the balls that were repressurized at 30 PSI probably either needed more PSI or slightly longer time in the tank. But either way, I just wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison. Now I'm going to check and see how the tennis balls bounce at 32 PSI for two weeks and see if it's any better than when I set it at 30 PSI. Now from the previous tests, I was close and they bounced similar to new balls, but they weren't the same. So I'm hoping that this will be better when I test it. The first ball bounced 33 inches on the first bounce and then 18 inches on the second bounce. So that is identical to a brand new tennis ball. And you can even see the bounces afterwards are similar to a new tennis ball. The second ball bounced 30 inches and around 14 inches on the second bounce. So either it didn't get enough pressurization or it was just a bad bounce. The third ball bounced 33 inches again and similar it got 18 inches on the second bounce so now it looks just like a brand new tennis ball now i'm going to compare how they bounce side by side and you can see the repressurized ball and a new tennis ball are pretty much identical with this is really good news so i'm going to drop another one just to see you know if the trend continues so this second ball was the one that didn't bounce 30 inches on the first bounce and i can tell that this ball probably need a little bit more time in the tank and it definitely needs a little bit more pressurization. The third ball is going to bounce identical to the first ball. You can see that even the third ball has a slightly higher second and first bounce. Now that could be because they hit each other in the air. Um, but overall, 
This shows me that if you have really dead tennis balls and you want to add life to the tennis balls, all you have to do is buy the um, corny keg that you see in the video. And in my previous video, I show you how to buy all the parts and how to uh, do everything you need to do. And if you set it at 32 PSI for two weeks, and that's really dead tennis balls, um, they bounce just like a brand new tennis ball out of the can. Now what I'm doing now is setting the PSI to 14 PSI in each canister and putting the balls back in the canister. That way um, they stay fresh. And when I want to use them, I can just depressurize the canisters um, and take them out and use them as if I was opening a brand new um, can of tennis balls. So I later on opened up both canisters and used the tennis balls for a tennis lesson and I was very happy to see that the tennis balls bounced just like a new ball and that the tennis clients really couldn't tell a difference other than the fact that the balls were more worn than a new tennis ball. So this shows that you can bring life to your older tennis balls and you don't have to throw them away um, and you can reuse them in your practices. Now this would be a great practice uh, for someone who has a tennis academy or someone who's a tennis coach or even someone who has a ball machine for personal use uh, and they have to constantly go through a lot of tennis balls. So I'm just happy to validate that this process actually works and that I found a recommending uh, setting to use which is 32 PSI for two weeks on really dead tennis balls. So I hope this video is helpful to you and thank you so much for watching it.